Hi everyone, Angela here. Now, if you have a lot of scrunchies to make or you wanna start a business sewing scrunchies, I just wanna share with you how I go about it. In this video, I'll show you some of the tools I use and three quick and easy methods to sew your scrunchies. So make sure you stick around to the very end. If you can, definitely get the biggest cutting board that you can afford or have room for. At least as wide as your fabric when it's folded in half, it's gonna make your life a lot easier. With the grid lines, it'll also help you line your fabric up so that it's square and straight. The next thing you'll want is a nice long and wide quilting ruler. The edges of a quilting ruler are nice and thick so that you can run a rotary blade easily along its sides. You want the ruler long enough so it'll go right across the width of the fabric and also wide enough so that you can look at the markings and then easily cut out any width fabric that you need. Another handy ruler to have is this two inch grid ruler with a metal edge. Sometimes I don't need to use a big quilting ruler and I just need to cut a short edge so I can run my rotary knife along that metal bit and not damage the thin plastic. Next is my favorite rotary cutter. This one actually has safety covers on both sides of the blade, and this way I can hold it with my finger on the top of the blade and my thumb on the side, and holding it like this, I have complete control when I'm cutting out the fabric. If you don't have a rotary blade, just use chalk to mark out your lines and cut out with a good pair of scissors. My absolute favorite pair of scissors are my 11 inch Kai micro serration ones. It's from their professional series and these scissors cut through silks and slippery fabrics with ease. They really are worth every single penny. Now we've got our fabric folded in half with the shiny right side of the satin together. Now you can cut your fabric pieces one strip at a time, but we're going to lay out our fabric and stack them. Put down a weight to keep the fabric from shifting. Next I'm going to cut away the selvage edges from all the fabric. I never leave selvage in any of my sewing projects. The selvages are thicker and more tightly woven and that's why you shouldn't use it. Now I'm cutting along the width of the fabric because this will give me the correct measurement that I need for the length of the scrunchie, but you can also cut along the length of the fabric as well. Stack the fabric by color and then roll it up with the open ends to the right ready for the sewing machine. Now if you're using a fabric such as chiffon, it's not so convenient to lay out and stack. It shifts too much and it wastes too much time to fiddle around with it. So first what we can do is just cut off the selvage edge. You just need to snip the ends and then literally just rip it away. When you rip this type of fabric, it rips really straight and easily. Now the width of the fabric, again, is exactly what I need for the length of the scrunchie. So I'm just going to turn the fabric around onto its length and I'm going to make little cuts at the width that I need. This is when your cutting mat comes in real handy. You don't need to waste any time marking out on your fabric. Instead, you can just follow along the grid lines where you need to cut. Now just tear along all of those little cuts and you'll get a perfect straight edge because it's tearing along the weave of the fabric. Now fold the strips right sides together and stack your fabric, leaving the ends to the right so that you can roll up the fabric and have it ready to sew. Another way I cut out fabric is by marking it with a meter stick and a piece of chalk. And then I use my electric cutting knife to cut out the pieces. Not only will it save you time, but it will also save your hands. So this is definitely another good investment to make if you're planning to do a lot of cutting. And lastly, just cut off all those selvages again. For the elastic, I use quarter inch braided elastic and I buy it in bulk on the roll. 
You can cut your elastic with scissors, but I prefer to use my rotary blade and the measurements on the mat. The only problem is if you keep cutting on that same spot, you're going to cut right through the mat. So what I use is some of these cheap, thin food cutting boards. And what I do is I put two pieces of foam mounting tape to the measurement that I need to cut the elastic. So all you have to do is just push the end of the elastic against the tape and cut with the rotary knife on the other side. So this is a nice quick way to make sure all your elastics are the same length. And as the cutting board gets worn out, all you have to do is move the tape to another position on the board. So now we're ready to sew. We just need to unroll this first bundle. Make sure the cotton you're using matches the right side of the fabric. For this first method, we'll stitch the short ends of the scrunchie by placing the right sides together and sewing with either a half inch or one centimeter seam, back tacking at the start and finish of each one. My machine automatically cuts the threads at the end of each seam, but if yours doesn't, stitch all the seams together first and then cut and separate each piece to save time. Now this next step is completely optional. Turn your piece around and at the halfway mark, just use your clippers and make a notch on each side. This will just help you match your fabric. Now open up your fabric with that seam that you've just sewn on the bottom. Take that top layer and fold it in half twice. We wanna make that nice and skinny. Fold over the top layer and open up your seams on both sides. Match the seams in the center. And then we'll start by back tacking right on that seam and with your needle down, pull that center piece of fabric towards you as much as you can. And then just continue stitching as far down as you can until you need to pull that center fabric and just check from time to time that it's not going to get caught in the stitching. Now when you get close to the start of your stitching, you're going to have to leave an opening there about the size of two or three fingers. Back tack at the end of your stitching and then spread that opening and with your thumb, push the end of that fabric through it and start pulling out the right side of the fabric. Just hang on to the seam on the left side and the fabric should pull out easily. Now I'm just gonna grab one of the cut elastics and my Clover flexible bodkins to thread the elastic through. All you have to do is put the ends through that opening and pull it down to secure each end. Now just thread through one of the bodkins through the entire scrunchie while the other one stays anchored on the outside. Now pull the ends out and put them together Wrap it around your finger and tie a knot like you would a balloon. Pull the elastic tight and you want to leave a tail that's about three quarters of an inch or two centimeters long. Next, tuck in the fabric of the opening and pull on it a little bit so that the edges of the folds match. Now stitch nice and close to the edge of the fold to close that opening. And lastly, cut your threads really well now so that you don't have to do it later. Now for the next two methods, you're going to take your cut elastics and again, tie your knots like a balloon, leaving that three quarter of an inch or two centimeter tail at the end. Now, if you're finding this video helpful, make sure to like and leave a comment. For the second method, we're going to sew the short side of the scrunchie again with right sides together, back tacking at the start and finish of the seam. Just like before, you're going to open up your fabric with the seam that you've just sewn on the bottom. And then you're going to fold over the top layer a couple of times to make it skinny. Fold over the top layer, again open up your seams and match it at the center seam. But this time you're going to grab your elastic and you're going to just place it in the center between the fabric and push it over to the left side. With the elastic out of your way, start by back tacking right on that seam. Pull a little bit of the top layer of fabric through the elastic, stitch a few inches, 
And then with your needle down, pull that center fabric towards you. So you're going to sew just like you did the last version. All you have to do is just keep pulling that top layer of fabric through the elastic as you sew. Just keep your fingers through the elastic so that you can pull it while you're sewing. By doing it this way, you won't have to do any threading of the elastic later. Again, once you get close to the start of the stitching, you'll need to leave an opening about two or three fingers wide. Back tack and again use your thumb to push the fabric through and then pull the rest of the scrunchie out. And then just stitch your opening closed. Now for this last method, it's just slightly different. We're going to stitch the side again, but we're going to back tack and only stitch down about an inch and back tack again. Leave a space about two or three fingers wide, back tack and stitch to the end of the seam. And back tack to finish. So this time your opening is here on the side seam rather than across the top. So open up your fabric and stitch the scrunchie exactly the same way as we did the last one. This time you're going to stitch right to the very beginning where you started stitching. There's no need to leave an opening because we already have that opening on the side. Again, just push the fabric through and pull your scrunchie out. Stitch that opening closed and this time you're left with a beautiful scrunchie without any stitching along the outer edge. Thanks again for watching. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Until next time, happy sewing.